Every day, billions of people start their routine with a cup of instant coffee, the perfect blend of convenience and flavor. But behind those granules that dissolve in seconds, there is a titanic effort that transforms raw coffee beans from distant plantations into a product ready for your cup. Now then, how is it possible that each jar is so consistent and delicious? Stay until the end, because we are going inside the facilities of Nestlé, the largest producer of instant coffee in the world, to discover the entire process. But before entering this incredible factory, remember to subscribe and give a like to the video. Instant coffee was not born in a modern factory, but in the 18th century, when in Great Britain, a primitive version was created by boiling and drying coffee to form soluble blocks. The flavor was rough and it hardly dissolved, so it remained a rarity. During the 19th century, powdered versions appeared, easier to use, but they still lost aroma and did not preserve well, which is why only explorers and soldiers used it for practicality. The big leap came in the 20th century, when George Constant Lewis Washington developed a light instant coffee, quick to prepare and perfect to take anywhere, which finally opened the door to its massive consumption. Then came the Second World War, and that's when everything exploded. In 1938, Nestle perfected the spray drying process and launched Nescafe. Millions of rations were sent to Allied soldiers. It saved space, it was practical, and it became part of the military routine. When the war ended, the soldiers were already used to it, and they brought it to the civilian market. From that moment on, the improvements did not stop. New extraction techniques, better aroma preservation, and an increasingly stable production. Thus, instant coffee went from being a rarity to becoming a key product of the global food industry. Today, its production operates like a gigantic network that combines efficiency, technology, and sustainability all to meet a demand that exceeds 2 billion cups a day worldwide. But how does an instant coffee factory work? It all begins in the plantations of Brazil, Vietnam, or Colombia, where coffee trees grow between 600 and 2,000 meters above sea level level in rich soils and under moderate rainfall. There, two main varieties are cultivated. Arabica, smooth and with a slightly acidic touch, and Robusta, more resistant and with a strong flavor. Each plant follows a carefully managed annual cycle. After flowering, the white blossoms turn into red cherries in about nine months, and each cherry holds two beans covered by sweet pulp. The harvest is an art. On high-end farms, it is done by hand, selecting only the ripe cherries, while in large plantations, machines shake the shrubs and quickly collect the cherries without damaging the branches. The exact ripeness of each cherry is crucial. One mistake can ruin the flavor of the entire batch. After the harvest, the beans go through post-harvest processing, mainly following two methods, wet and dry. In the wet method, typical of Arabica, the cherries are submerged in water to clean them and separate the damaged ones. Then, a pulping machine separates the pulp from the beans, which still retain a sticky layer called mucilage. Here comes the fermentation. For 12 to 48 hours, natural bacteria break down that layer, releasing compounds that will define complex aromas and flavors, avoiding harsh notes. Afterwards, the beans are washed and classified by size and density, ensuring quality and preservation. With up to 50% water still present, the beans move on to drying, either in the sun on patios for one or two weeks, being turned several times times a day, or in mechanical dryers with hot air, which accelerate the process. The goal is to reach 12% humidity, perfect to prevent mold. Then, the hulling machine removes the parchment shell, leaving the green beans ready for classification by weight and quality, and they are packed into 60 kilo bags prepared to travel around the world. These beans can be stored for up to a year if the proper humidity is maintained. Otherwise, molds and toxins such as aquatoxin appear, which are strictly regulated at the international level. Upon arrival at the factories, trucks unload the bags in automated bays where sensors verify weight and integrity. Robots with arms and suction clamps place them on conveyor belts at a rate of one every 10 seconds, processing up to 1,000 tons a day and preventing accidents from heavy loads. Each bag passes through infrared moisture scanners, and if it exceeds the ideal levels, it is redirected to controlled drying or rejection. At the same time, robotic probes extract small samples that go to laboratories to analyze caffeine, acidity, and contaminants, ensuring compliance with international standards, such as those of the FDA. On the other hand, did you know that Instant Coffee once had a very peculiar name or slogan? Yes, 
During the Second World War, Allied soldiers called it the morning lifesaver because it took up little space and could be prepared with canteen water. This not only helped keep morale high, returning to the production line, once the bags of green beans have passed the initial controls, they are transferred to climate-controlled silos for temporary storage. Here, fans keep the temperature at about 20 degrees and the humidity very low, preserving freshness and preventing the proliferation of mold. From these silos, elevator conveyors, imagine mini elevators for beans, carry them to the cleaning area. There, vibrating machines with multiple sieves operate at extremely high frequencies, about 1,000 vibrations per minute, separating impurities. The upper sieves retain large stones, the intermediate ones remove twigs, and the lower ones allow only perfect beans to pass through. In addition, jets of pressurized air sweep away light particles such as dry leaves. This step is critical. Even 1% of impurities could damage machinery later on or affect the final flavor. Then comes the sensory quality control, where professional tasters step in. These experts, trained for years, evaluate the beans in rooms with controlled temperature and humidity and neutral light, almost like a medical laboratory. Following the cupping protocol, they first smell the dry beans, then break the crust after infusing them with water at 93 degrees to release the volatile compounds, and finally slurp noisily, aerating the liquid in the mouth to evaluate acidity, body, sweetness, and aftertaste on a 100-point scale. Only the lots that score above 80 move forward. The rest are redirected to standard coffees. The next stage is roasting, the phase where the real chemical transformation takes place. Although before getting into this process, remember to subscribe to the channel and comment on what other product you want to see in how it's made, how it works. Continuing along the production line, the clean beans enter massive rotating drums of up to 500 kilograms, heated with gas or electric burners between 190 and 280 degrees Celsius. Internal paddles constantly turn the beans, like in a cement mixer, preventing hot spots that could burn entire batches. Roasting time varies, between 8 and 12 minutes for light roasts, preserving caffeine and fruity notes, 15 to 20 minutes for dark roasts, developing a robust and smoky flavor. Infrared sensors and software with artificial intelligence adjust the temperature and speed in real time, stopping the process just when the famous crack is heard, a sound similar to popcorn that indicates the internal expansion of the beans. Afterwards, the beans move on to coolers, Perforated trays with fans underneath and stirrers above bring the temperature down from 200 degrees to room level in just 10 minutes. Next, the beans are ground in mills with corrugated rollers or adjustable discs. A medium coarse grind is achieved, which optimizes extraction, preventing fine powder from clogging filters. It is like grinding pepper on a large scale, maximizing the surface to release aromatic and flavor compounds. Pneumatic conveyors, tubes with compressed air, carry the powder directly to the extractors without exposing it to oxygen, preserving freshness, and ensuring that each batch maintains the desired profile before moving on to the next stage of production. The extraction is where coffee powder is transformed into an intense liquid concentrate. Imagine percolation columns as tall as two-story buildings, through which hot water at 150 degrees and 10 bars of pressure circulates in countercurrent. The initial stages use cooler water to capture delicate aromas, while the final stages apply intense heat to extract caffeine and solids. It is like preparing several infusions in sequence, recirculating every drop for maximum efficiency. The result? An extract with 25 to 35% solids, much more concentrated than any homemade coffee. Centrifuges and fine filters remove sediments, leaving a viscous liquid ready for dehydration. As a fact, to obtain one kilo of instant coffee, approximately 2 to 2.5 kilos of green beans are needed, since between 50 and 60% of the weight is lost as water during extraction and drying. This efficiency explains why instant coffee is so practical for global transport, reducing carbon dioxide emissions compared to shipping whole beans, and why it is affordable in emerging markets. From here, the process splits depending on the type of coffee, spray drying for standard and freeze drying for premium. In spray drying, the extract is pumped into 20-meter towers and atomized into millions of droplets at 200 bars. Hot air at 200 degrees circulates at about 600 kilometers per hour, evaporating the moisture in just five seconds. The dry particles fall to the lower cone and are collected with cyclonic filters. It is like nebulizing perfume in a tunnel of scorching wind. 
The resulting powder agglomerates with steam, forming soluble granules, and each tower can process up to 5 tons per hour. In freeze-drying, the extract is frozen at minus 40 degrees on trays, forming solid sheets, like coffee ice, which are broken into fragments with blades. They then enter vacuum chambers, heated to 60 degrees for 4 hours. Sublimation converts the ice directly into vapor, leaving porous granules that retain up to 95% of the original aromas. It is like freezing soup and evaporating the ice without melting it. The result is a premium product with a crystalline texture, ideal for high-end coffees. Finally, both types of powder go through agglomerators, machines that slightly moisten them with diluted extract and dry them in fluid beds, forming uniform granules from 0.5 to 2 millimeters, ready to dissolve without clumps. Only minimal additives, such as anti-caking agents, are added when necessary. Modern formulas prioritize purity and authentic flavor. The next phase is packaging. For this, empty jars, whether recyclable glass or plastic, move along conveyor belts at an impressive rate of 300 to 600 units per minute. Volumetric or weight-based dispensers fill each jar with precision, from 50 to 200 grams, while laser sensors verify that the levels are exact. Then, sealers apply hermetic foil-topped lids and inject nitrogen to displace oxygen, extending shelf life up to 24 months. Labeling machines apply batch codes and dates so that by scanning one you can see exactly which farm your coffee comes from. Artificial vision cameras inspect each jar, rejecting any defects such as imperfect seals or misplaced labels. Finally, the finished products are palletized by robots and prepared for distribution. From the moment the green beans arrive until your coffee reaches the jar, the entire process takes between 18 and 36 hours, but behind it are decades of refinement. This true industrial symphony ensures that each morning cup is consistent, accessible, and sustainable. So, the next time you stir those granules, you will already know the enormous global chain that makes that moment possible. Tell me, what did you think of the process? I will be reading you in the comments. Subscribe and give a like, so you don't miss the upcoming videos on how the most well-known products are made and how they work. See you next time.